I'm gonna walk you through a Diag on a 02 1500 Chevy. This thing has had uh, a few transmissions put into it. Uh, now it's having a running issue. It runs poorly. The customer says it barely made it here, no power. He claims he uh, unhooked some injectors all the injectors on half of the motor and it doesn't run doesn't change how it runs um, I know it's pretty fumy so I'm gonna test drive it and show you what it's doing a little bit I'm not gonna drive it far because he said it barely made it here I don't want to be on the side of the road but yeah we're gonna go through step by step you're gonna see it as I do it That's interesting. That was to the floor. noise but doesn't go anywhere engine feels unbalanced not really like a misfire just unbalanced hmm. no smoke So it's in neutral, I'm trying to back into the shop. There's a little apron here. The tire's just touching the beginning of it. To the floor. And he just died. I got it running. I hooked up my fuel gauge to it. And sitting here idling. Check out how much it's shaking. So, fuel pressure right at 52. That's enough, it should run. Specs are 58. You can see when I turn the key on, it jumps up to 58. It's back down to 54 now. Fuel pump quit. So we'll check the codes. PO300, engine misfire. Okay, we already know that. Self-explanatory there. No history of codes. We know it's got good fuel pressure. We'll see just what kind of quick test we can do here. Injector balance. Because I can smell it's fumy, but it doesn't seem excessively rich. I don't smell fuel. So, 
energizing fuel system. Let's see what it drops to. 42, 43. That was injector one. We got to cycle the ignition between each one. Injector two. Forty-two, forty-three. So that's the same. Start it up so it don't completely flood the motor. The thing shakes like crazy. So it's the same. I'll go four. I should have cycled the key. It probably won't let me do it. Click me. Forty-two. Same. Same. Forty-two, forty-three. Same. What this test is doing is you probably caught on by now. It turns on the fuel pump lets it energize the fuel system to what max pressure would be. Turns off the pump, it holds that pressure. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna energize one of the fuel injectors and you're measuring the drop of the fuel pressure. 42, 43, so all of them have dropped the fuel pressure the same. That tells you that each one is opening the same amount. It's not dropping down a whole lot more fuel pressure in one of them. If it dropped down to 20 PSI, then you know that that one injector is overfueling, causing a poor running condition. 42, 43. So all injectors check out, they're all balanced, equal. So we know we got fuel pressure, and we know the injectors are dosing correctly. So fuel system checks out fine. Now we gotta go on to, I guess, ignition. There's no real codes that really help you. A PO300 could be caused by a lot of stuff so I'll get set up for testing some ignition before I jump to testing ignition I'm gonna check out for uh, engine misfire see if there's any kind of misfire counter that I can view to see where it's coming from here on my scan tool it shows all eight cylinders start it up it feels like it's from all of them like it's not from all of them all of them on bank one it looks like the customer did state whenever he disconnects everything from bank one that it didn't change how it ran So we got a problem on cylinder one and cylinder seven. Hmm. That's interesting. And now we know cylinder one, cylinder seven. I'll look up firing order, but I bet that both of those are on cylinder are on bank one. I've looked up cylinder location. Here they are. 
cylinders one, three, five, seven, all the odd numbers are on left bank, bank one. So we got cylinder one that's having misfires and cylinder seven that's having misfires. Hmm. Makes you put your thinking cap on. So on here, I'm gonna see about disabling some injectors. Disable number one. didn't make any difference at all so is one even firing we know the injector is working so I'm thinking one isn't even firing I'm gonna do number seven also but we already did the injector balance test so we already turned on injector numbers one and seven and they leak down the same amount of fuel pressure so that cylinder should be getting fuel maybe they're not getting spark whenever i turn off the fuel injector it's not putting in fuel but if you're not getting spark to begin with they're not going to fire anyways so let's see what seven does i'm going to do this to give you a better view cycle the key maybe it'll let me do it feel any change so that was one and seven our two problem cylinders I'm gonna try a different cylinder so one and seven were what we just tested let's try four how it looks big difference yeah big difference so since I forgot to show you the graph on the RPMs when we did cylinder one and seven, I'm gonna do them again with the graph on so you can see. I should have done that to begin with. My bad. All right, here's cylinder one. Disable the cylinder. Turn the injector back on. No difference. Turn it off. Back on. No difference. Seven. Cylinder seven did the exact same thing. We're going to do number six. We did four last time. So we'll compare it to number six. Big difference. See it drop. Turn it back on. Do it again. Drop. Turn it back on. Do it again. Another drop. I felt it. But. Anyway, so we can see differences on the other injectors, but cylinder one and seven, there's nothing. So by looking at that, cylinder one and seven are not firing. They should have fuel. We know that by doing the injector balance test. 
if the wiring to the injectors wasn't working then the injector balance test wouldn't be able to open up the injectors that's controlled by the computer going to the injector so that tells me that the wiring from the computer to the injector is working well you need air you need fuel and you need spark we're getting air we're getting fuel now we gotta check out the spark so we know the issue is cylinder one and seven we're gonna be checking out the ignition cools now I could hook this up and use the four channel scope and get all technical with it and fancy you don't have to do that we're just gonna jump straight to it and do what we call some swap tronics I took the cool off the mount right here and plugged it up to the wires for cylinder three the second coil here you can see down here I got the spark plug wires kind of X'd over, crossed over. So we're still showing cylinder one misfire and cylinder seven misfire. We already swapped the coil for cylinder one, so we know it's not the coil. To figure out if it's an engine issue or a wiring issue, computer issue, I'm just gonna put a spark plug tester on it. See if I can get a spark. If I got sparks out of all the cylinders out of bank one, compare one and seven to one of the middle ones, three and five, then we'll know it's putting out spark. So then we would know it's not a spark issue. Maybe it's an internal engine issue that's causing conflict with cylinder one and seven. Don't know until we do it. You just gotta keep thinking of things to, to troubleshoot it. So, yeah, I'll put this back together, and then uh, I'll grab my spark plug tester. Here's cylinder one, spark test. It's flashing consistently. It's weird on the camera. I gotta keep moving it or it just stops flashing. But anyways, number one sparking consistently. Cylinder two, just a repair. Good. Again, I don't know why it's I don't know why it's uh, not showing consistent flashes on the camera. It's consistent flashes all the time on both cylinders. So we're getting spark. I would assume that we're getting fuel. By the injector balance test. Maybe I need to double check that we're actually getting fuel while it's running. Hmm. I know this truck had uh, some transmissions put on it. I was kind of suspecting maybe a, a wiring issue. It still could be. Um, hmm. Maybe the injector harness isn't put on correctly. I don't believe he did anything with the injector harness. It was running good before he changed all the transmissions. I'll have to think about it. So in my head, I'm thinking I already checked ignition. We're getting spark. I already checked fuel. It should be getting fuel. Um, we know we got fuel pressure. And we know all the injectors are working by the harness. So it should be getting fuel. If it's getting spark, it should be getting fuel. So what's left? There's the engine. So I'm gonna check a relative compression check. And it's a little bit different than doing a manual compression check. So um, let me show you what that looks like. So I'm using my scope. And I've got all these wires hooked up everywhere. So you hook up a ground. I got a trigger to show you on the scope which one is cylinder one? That's that back probe right there going in the top of cylinder one coil. So that's gonna tell you when cylinder one ignition coil gets ignited. Now to know what the compression is on the engine kind of, I have an amp clamp, a low amp, amp, cramp, amp clamp on the positive wire of the battery. This is the wire that goes to the starter. The idea is it's reading the amperage that it takes to turn over the motor. 
if there's more compression on a cylinder, it's going to take more amperage to make the starter turn it over. If there's a spot that there's less compression, it's going to take less amperage to turn it over. So I'm going to show you what that looks like on the scope. So you see the green line that spikes up. That would be the cylinder number one ignition coil igniting. Here, there, there. And if you count these humps, there's eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it fires again, starts off again. So there's the firing order. Now, the firing order is one, eight, seven, two, six, five, four, three. So we, need, we just need to focus on one and seven. So cylinder one, we already know when it fires. So there's cylinder one. This one would be seven. And you look at them and they're the same height as all the others. Again, one and seven, same height as all the others. And again, one's the same height. So we don't have a compression issue. That's what that shows us. So engine is good. It's something electrical. So now I'm thinking, okay, we know that the injectors put out the same amount of fuel. The pressure dropped the same for injectors. We know that we're getting spark. The spark tester showed that in both cools. We turn off the injectors in 1 and 7, and it makes zero difference whenever the engine's idling. So maybe we got a wiring issue. Maybe we have a wiring issue that won't allow enough amperage. Maybe there's a ground issue. So I'm gonna start chasing down that. Because when we energize the injectors during the test, during the leak down test, all the injectors work. And the, and the pressure drops the same amount. So yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Maybe there's a wiring issue and it's not letting uh, enough amperage by, whether it's a ground or a power wire. So now I'm going to look up wiring schematics for the fuel injectors and go from there. So I'm looking up the ignition cools and seeing what 1 and 7 have in common as far as a wiring schematic. So we got ignition cool 1 and ignition cool 7. Now there is the control circuit here. It's not connected to 7. We got the low reference. It comes up, goes over here. It's connected to all of the coils. So that wouldn't be something that would only affect 1 and 7. And then we got uh, ignition coil, ignition 1 voltage. It comes up, goes over to here. But if you follow it, it also goes to all of the coils. So just looking at the wiring schematic, going off of one and seven having an issue, I don't see anything on the wiring schematic that would only isolate issues to one and seven. So that was the ignition side, so now I'm gonna look at fuel. So I have the wiring schematic for fuel injectors pulled up. And here we go. You got injector one here. An injector seven here. There's nothing that connects them to either, except for maybe a ground issue possible. But I've already looked through the wiring schematic and I don't see any grounds that would be on that harness. So that leads me to believe maybe something else is going up. Maybe there's a ground issue. Maybe. Maybe it's not just an issue on 1 and 7 like I'm led to believe from the scan tool. Maybe it's something more. At this point, I know that I'm spending too much time on it. I'm spinning my wheels, chasing my tail. I know the ignition checks out good. I know the fuel system checks out good. Um, there could be something going on wiring-wise. Possibly something to do with a computer issue. I've seen freaky stuff before. But 
I need to just come back with a fresh mind. I know that the customer has stated that he plugged every, unplugged everything from one side of the engine and it didn't make a difference. Maybe I need to explore that option. I've been focused on, he said he changed these transmissions, thinking maybe something was done while he was changing the transmission. Maybe this was something that was already happening before he started changing transmissions. Maybe it never needed a transmission. Maybe he didn't do anything when he changed the transmissions to cause an issue. He says it ran great before the transmissions, but maybe it didn't. I don't know. Sometimes you need to listen to what customers tell you and sometimes you don't. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna come back to it with a fresh mind. Thinking what I'm thinking now, Maybe I should have went straight to the cat after he, uh, you know, after what he told me, unplugging everything from one side of the engine. But, uh, yeah. It took me coming inside and cooling off to really think about it. So when I go back out there, that's what I'm going to tackle is the cat. I already did this, and the video quality is horrible. The sound is, is unbearable. So... I unplugged the, uh, actually I unscrewed the O2 sensor on bank one. I got a pressure tester in there now. But I just simply took out the O2 sensor and started it up, ran great. RPMs went high, everything. So I believe that cat's clogged, but now I got a back pressure uh, gauge in the O2 sensor hole. And I'm gonna start it up. And this thing, if it goes up to two PSI or more, uh, at 2500 RPMs, that's going to be the problem. I'm gonna say that's bad. That's real bad. So it's been a few days since that truck left. The customer declined the repair and they removed the cats themselves and, and replaced them and did whatever they did. But it runs great. That's what it was. It was the cat the whole time. In hindsight, I should have listened to him saying that unplugging everything on one side of the engine didn't affect how it ran. When he said that, I was thinking electrical issue, he pinched a wiring harness, changing the transmissions or something like that. Turns out that cat was so clogged, it had been going on for a while, and maybe it made the engine performance so poor that it didn't shift properly, and he changed transmissions thinking it was transmissions. That's my hypothesis. That's my diagnosis of how things happened. I should have listened to what he was saying. I spent a lot more time testing a whole lot of stuff on the engine. I didn't need to test. Number one thing, he said he unplugged everything on one side of the engine. I should have looked under it, seen if there was one cap per bank. Lesson learned. Now I know on the next one.